For my ancestors, the canoe was basically the vehicle. In order to move or to, to migrate from the ocean to the inland, uh, if we wanted to bring our belongings and bring our family, we could put them all in the canoe and, and we could go on one trip. Other than that, we had to make special trips and several trips. So um, the canoe was uh, probably the most valuable uh, item that our ancestors would have had. From here, we could take this canoe and either go down the Mersey River into Rossignol right through to the Atlantic Ocean in Liverpool. Or we could take it and go the other way and end up in Bear River and, and the Bay of Fundy. You know, can paddle across to New Brunswick. And uh, so, you know, down down the New England states, down along the ocean, uh, the coast. Yeah. Um, you know, you can also go along the coast and end up in Cape Breton or Prince Edward Island. Our ancestors, that's what they did because, uh, you know, they're the whole way along, they could hunt and fish and, and get their, everything that they needed. Our ancestors would have spent the winters inland here in Keji. And um, because it was sheltered, it was warmer inland, lots of snow, but also moose and caribou. So they had their food for the winter. And as the ice went out and things warmed up, they'd, they'd uh, head out to the coast along the ocean. And then they would live off the, uh, the shellfish, you know, in the summertime. But also in the summertime, when there's a little bit of breeze and wind, yes, yeah, yeah. wouldn't be so many flies. <laughs> because in, in June, you wouldn't want to be in Kedji in June because the flies would, flies would have a feast on The, the, the birch bark, the cedar, the, the spruce, it all has an incredible spiritual energy. You know, some people can't feel that amazing energy, but animals can. Animals can sense things that a lot of people can't, and, uh, but they definitely could sense the, uh, the energy of our ancestors around my head. It's hard to describe because when I go in the canoe, especially when I go alone, it's, it's like being back in time. You know, it's like paddling back in time. It almost puts you back there, but it all, also, it's a healing energy. And especially when I have my grandkids in here and we go, it's like we're alone in the world, you know, and we're in a different time. And yeah. it's, but it's very special, very, uh, very um, spiritual, healing. Yeah. We were kids. We didn't have life jackets, and I used to go up to the edge of the ice, get my canoe on top, and scurry across the ice, and then dip it in the other end, and away we'd go again. And a lot of times we were doing that with no adults around, and far enough away from the houses that nobody would see us anyway, And but we didn't have life jackets. And, uh, Todd's a master canoe builder, but also a master teacher, and uh, and this project is really powerful. I think for so many reasons, and uh, you know the canoe itself is a really it's a powerful symbol of the Mi'kmaq and Mi'kmaq Nation. It's it's also a really powerful symbol of how people experience Kedjim Kujik today. So there's this great sort of cultural connection around the canoe. Okay. We're still dry. <laughs> and I think this project is so powerful for us, and uh, I think Parse Tandem are really interested in working with Todd about this, because it's a great intersection of the notion of, uh, you know, having Mi'kmaq presence on the land again. As Todd just said, Todd's family is, you know, connected to this place, this land, this water. 
the designation of Kejimkujik as a national park and a national historic site is built on the notion of continuous presence in a cultural landscape. And so this, you know, uh, is so neat because it's, it's a question of connecting people with that Mi'kmaq perspective and Mi'kmaq presence on the land. And it is about connecting to history. That's obviously part of it and the traditional means. But it's also a question of connecting to the Mi'kmaq perspective of today and what the Mi'kmaq perspective of tomorrow is going to look like. So I think that's what's partly really neat about this project is that, you know, lots of historic sites talk about things that have happened in the past. Um, but with this work with Todd, you know, I think we're together able to talk a little bit about what the future is going to look like. Okay, now you can about, you know, real questions around ensuring that a place like this that's a Mi'kmaq cultural landscape still has, uh, you know, Mi'kmaq people that are in harvesting park, building canoes, sharing knowledge, and those kinds of things. So that's, that's part of what's been so powerful. I think the other thing, you know, just in terms of how Todd is a teacher, you know, we've seen the public who, who are fascinated by, you know, the making of these canoes. And it's talking not only about the making of these canoes, but also a way of being, a way of being connected to the land, connected to nature, thinking about, you know, what's really a value in protecting of a, of a landscape like Ketchum Kujik. Um, so those notions of protection, of culture, of hands-on engagement are things that I think also Todd's really been sharing with visitors here. And I think the last thing is, you know, really thinking about how Mi'kmaq communities locally, like Todd has been so open and generous with this that, you know, people come and work with Todd. Uh, you know, in the past we've had youth from, uh, from Bear River working side by side with them people from other communities, as you say, people from all over uh, the province, the country, around the world coming to connect. But, but it's also been a really amazing way of seeing that traditional knowledge passed down. And, and I think for us at Parks Canada, being only even a part of being able to have that, uh, that sort of presence on the landscape is really special. You don't always get an opportunity to paddle birch bark. So when I have the opportunity to share, that's what I love to do. And that's why we build in public. So we can share every bit of it with public. Yeah. Sometimes we don't get much work done, but we have fun. So I hear.